All right, everybody, so we've got a special treat for you today. Uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for a couple of months now. Um, we're over here in Orangeville, California, uh, visiting my good friend, Natasha Connolly. Um, she is a horticulturist, um, self-sustaining urban farmer that's uh, been growing things really her whole life and found this beautiful piece of property here in Orangeville and has this amazing garden right here in the middle of suburbia. Um, and it's just a testament to what we can do as individuals to uh, reduce our carbon and ecological footprint on the planet by growing our own food and learning how to self-sustain. So I want to show you a little tour of her backyard. We'll talk to Natasha about some of the methods that she uses to get the kind of yields that she gets, uh, which is really, really impressive. I normally don't see food like this coming out of a suburban backyard. Um, so I'm really excited uh, to take you guys on this journey and let's go check it out. Uh, first step to a wonderful garden is sowing, seeding. Um, so Try to keep everything organized as possible, but that can be kind of hard. Um, we're still perfecting the method. But what we do is we start in here, and this kind of, it's not soil per se, but it's ground up like cocoa, um, a coconut and uh, like bark, really fine. So it's easy for the seeds to pop up. So we start here. Once they get to where they, you can see the third leaf on the little, uh, so you see I can see two here. When you get the third leaf is when you can actually transplant them into here. So if you look over here, you'll see we started getting those second, uh, the third and fourth leaves. And then we actually put it into a mixture of that thin material with actual soil. Um, you definitely want to get soil that has perlite in it so that they can breathe because they're still very, uh, the roots are really sensitive um, and you want them to grab. Um, every once in a while, you'll, you'll fail, things happen. This little guy didn't like being transplanted, even though it was it was ready to be. Um, but I won't give up. We'll still see if it'll uh, come through. So, first step. Second step is um, after they get you know about two, three inches, depending on what type of vegetable you're growing. Um, then we transplant them into these um, these size buckets. So over here we have corn, Anaheim peppers. Um, we have um, edamames right here. Um, and we have uh, poblanos, and so all kinds of goodies that were ready to be transplanted to the next level. Uh, so this is, I would say, level three. And so us. these these don't get exposed to direct sunlight? Um, I give them morning sun because it's lighter and they do want that photosynthesis, but, when, but if you go like right now, it's too much. And what happens is, is you'll burn the roots. And because it'll, the, the soil will heat up too much for them, they're not strong enough, so it burns them and it kills them. I see. Um, so, we put here, that's what we have, as you can see, the tarps, because um, we're still not perfecting uh, the whole three-stage process. So we're doing, we're, we're, you know, working with what we got, and uh, a table, and some buckets, and a tarp, and here we go, right? All right, so how long have you been in this house? Two years. All right, so Natasha's been in this house two years. She works like 50, 60 hours a week at Chicago Fire as a general manager. And so her time's limited. You know, she's got kids, she's got family, she's got a life. So she puts as much time into this as she can, but it's, it's, it's a step-by-step -step process. You don't just set up a badass garden exactly the way you want it overnight. And they're doing, I mean, as you can see, an amazing job with the tools that they have. So it's about making the effort, um, trial and error, learning what works, learning what doesn't work, and just adapting and changing over time. So back here, we just pulled everything. So here was where we had uh, mustard greens, collards, uh, they really like this area. This used to be our compost. As you can see, it's kind of choppy and there's all kinds of things in there. Um, uh, we were lucky to have great soil here. If you like dig down and if, if every time. Oh, I can tell just by walking on it. it uh, wow. We have great soil here. Um, it's almost like spongy. Uh-huh. So this used to be our compost. We're, we're, we're switching things up because we wanted to utilize this space uh, for veg, for fruit. So here's the carrots. Apparently carrots are really hard to grow. It's my first time growing carrots. I harvested this amount here. I left this amount here so I could show Joel um, just how beautiful and fun this is, for me anyway. Um, so, carrot greens, um, salads, you can make pestos out of them, it's amazing. So I literally use the whole plant. So I'm gonna pull one up here and see what we got. You know, I get the tricolor, so that's a red one. Oh, look at this beauty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my orange guy there. Awesome. 
Um, they're super easy to harvest. The children, I get my kids out here. My kids actually planted everything in my garden. I help them, but I think it's good for them. And then they just come out here and they start just pulling and eating. The cool things about carrots is you can harvest what you want for dinner. So if we're gonna do some kind of grilled meat, we'll just take this whole thing, a little bit of uh, olive oil and um, vinegar, put them right on the grill just like that, and they're delicious. So um, let's see if we can, and, and obviously like you see how tall this one is, right? So let's find that bad boy. Let's see how big this one ended up being. A couple things about carrots is when they start sprouting, you wanna separate them. Because if you don't, what happens is you get oh, this, yeah. right? So I didn't thin these out enough, but uh, I'm so happy with what I've gotten. Um, this is the, the last harvest, but we had a huge harvest the first time. But if you don't, you get these little guys, which the kids eat them too. So, you know, they're delicious no matter what. Uh, you feel good about it. Oh, here's the white one. So here's the other color. So I planted all three colors, white, red, and yeah, and orange. So um, if you take a bite of that. Carrot greens, you're thinking it's gonna be bitter, you're thinking it's not gonna be sweet, or it's not gonna be, it's gonna be uh, earthy. And they taste like carrots. Damn. Right? Doesn't it taste like a Tastes just like a carrot. Like a carrot. So, um. And it's actually uh, crisp. It's crisp. Yeah. It's crisp. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, it's like romaine lettuce yeah, almost. You're not, you wouldn't expect it. Um, it is delicious. I, you do a little cashews, a little olive oil, a little uh, garlic, you can make pesto sauce. It's amazing. That's a, so, that'd make a nice little garnish right on the plate. Oh, yeah. And they can eat it. Just, edible garnish. Mm. That also is good for your digestive system. So it's something, you know, they usually put parsley on your plate to eat. Well, a little bit of that at the end of your meal will help your food digest better. So um, I love it. This is like my favorite thing this year that I've grown. I'm super excited about it. Um, and as you can see, we have a lot more to go. And I can just start pulling wow. and pulling and pulling. Wow. So happy with this. Look how easy it is to harvest these. Simple. Simple and easy. Uh, wash them in a bucket of water. And so is this about the average size that's coming out, or was, um, was the I first one bigger than these? No, we've gotten some really big ones. It's all about how I thinned them, you know. So these two were like next to each other, right? So that's why they didn't get big. And you can also see how they're starting to wrap around. Oh, each I other. see. You see? So you gotta separate them. And um, my first time growing carrots, so I didn't know. So I learned, but I didn't know that. And the ones that are have more space in between them and they're not shoved next to the other ones are the ones that are gonna be bigger. I see. So the more space, the bigger the carrot. And I can leave the rest of these here until I wanna eat them and harvest as I go. Uh, if you harvest all at once, you gotta be making sure you're vacuum sealing or um, for carrots, you blanch them, put them in a, a vacuum seal bag and throw them in the, in the freezer, pull them out, stir fry or whatever you wanna saute carrots. Um, that's what you can do with them. So. Awesome. Here awesome. is, we harvest all this stuff. Uh, we had cabbage and broccoli, and I shared some of that with Joel, um, but we already harvested it, all of it and ate it all. Delicious. <laughs> uh, this is celery. Now, one thing about celery is once you pull it, unless you leave the end of it on it, it goes wilted real fast. So I'm gonna pull. And once again, this is my first time growing celery, okay? So if you don't break them up into the bunches, because when you buy them, it looks like it's one bundle. But when they started growing, I started realizing that it's actually multiple bundles that you're supposed to separate. Oh, wow. So if I would have separated that a little bit more, when it was a little bit smaller, you know, way smaller than it is now, because now it's done, season's over. Uh, if I would have separated them more, they would have gotten way bigger. They're still sweet, they're still delicious. And then putting them in the refrigerator, when I was harvesting them, I cut them off like that, take all the, 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 the dead stuff off, right? So that's one bundle. So look at it in Damn. perspective. That's one. But if I would have separated them, look how much more I would have. Yeah. If I put it in the refrigerator, though, and leave the root on, it'll last longer. Interesting. So if I cut it up and throw it in there tomorrow morning, it'll be wilted. Really? So, mm hmm Celery wilts, uh, wilts really fast. Uh, that stuff you get in the store, why it stays so long, is because it's sprayed and pumped with hormones and pesticides and stuff to uh, preserve it. Uh, the natural preservative to a plant, it's its root system. So even if I stuck that in water, it would, it would, I could probably have up to two weeks in the refrigerator. Huh. I keep my cilantro in water in the refrigerator, my parsley, and just clip off what I want, and it lasts a long time. So if you're going to use it right now, um, you chop it off. If not, leave the root on, and it'll last for a while. 
Um, I love juicing celery, so when I go to juice in the morning, I'll pull a couple of these off from here, grab some other things, and make a delicious juice. So, live and learn with the celery, but it's still delicious. Uh, just trial and error need it to be separated more. Um, so what we do have left right now, that we haven't harvested yet, is our lettuce. Now, Look at this lettuce, dude. Typically lettuce it's is crazy. A, right? Wow. It's a winter bed. Right? And the cool thing about lettuce is the more you pick, the more it grows. So as you can see how this one's grown up because I have took all the bottom. We were picking and picking all year, picking and picking. Um, fresh salads every day, fresh lettuce um, on my sandwiches. You know, I'm trying to lose some weight, right? So if I'm making tacos or anything like that, I don't use tortillas. I come out here. Oh, smart. I pull one of these out and I have tacos. Taco Let shells um, straight from the garden. People, that's better than what you get in the store. There's no pesticides in here. I don't pump it full of hormones. I use all um, non-GMO um, plants. I started seeding myself, so I let things flower, and then I get that, and then I save it for next year so I can really be um, self-efficient, not have to grab seeds anymore. So it's going to take a while to get there because um, this is only my first winter garden in this house. The first time I've ever planted lettuce like this, and it's ridiculous this is spinach so i love uh, i like using awesome. spinach for my taco tacos too because if you look they, they just they hold the tacos better they're a little more oh yeah a little more uh, sturdy but i love using these for tacos and then i feel good i don't feel so heavy and weighed down and um this is you know great vitamins for for, for your body so uh this over here so this is spinach red leaf we got romaine and that's butter leaf. So one thing I learned is it froze a couple times this year in the winter time and I lost lettuce. So if it says it's gonna freeze, don't be like, oh, you know, nothing will happen. It's okay. Cover your lettuce for sure with uh, something. They have this burlap material. If you just, all you have to do is throw it over it and it doesn't freeze it. And what I'm learning is that lettuce can actually grow in this zone all year round. And I learned that it's compatible with strawberries and I have my own strawberry patch which I'm gonna now plant lettuce to have all year round with my strawberry patch hmm. and so they feed off each other and um, they're delicious so see this is the burn stuff you'll start to see the burnt stuff in there oh, yeah. but I didn't want to give up uh, I didn't want to toss it I didn't want to pull it because it wasn't completely dead so these are butter leaves and once again live and learn there's three two three heads in here I should have separated them they each would have got this big oh, wow. so that's one butter leaf See how you can see the two? Oh yeah. So first mm -hmm. time on that one, uh, live and learn, but still have still have have had so much. I've yielded so much out of this, and I'm still yielding. Um, so kale, purple kale. Uh, remember I was telling you about my seeding, right? I love kale, uh, juicing it. It's delicious. Um, but you're starting to see the flowers, right? Mm -hmm. So at this point, I pull these off, and those are my seeds. Oh, I see. So you just use mm -hmm. these to reseed for next yep. year. So I'll take them, but if I don't pull them, it'll seed in here and all of a sudden I'll have kale popping up everywhere. And I don't want that. We want to uh, basically go with the seasons and, you know, next to tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that. So that's what we're doing. So um, with the kale plant, are these male, female or? Um, you know, I don't know that, uh, you know, to be, to be honest. Um, so even though it produces seeds, it's still producing edible kale leaves yeah like some plants you have to have two of this of, of the of the you know plant together because it won't it won't produce fruit it needs it to pollinate so like corn tomatillos corn cherry trees I got two apple trees I'll show you that I'm gonna plant with you guys today um but if you have to have one of each kind for it to actually produce fruit because they have to cross pollinate hmm. so there's quite a few things like that these are not one of them this is a plant that the seeds come out, you pull them, you know, you plant it later, and then you get the you get the, the veg out of it. So awesome. purple kale um, is awesome, it's delicious. Like I said, when I juice, you just take a couple leaves of this off, throw it in your juice. It's really good for you. I get my kids to eat it. Um, but yeah, that's, so this is the, that's what's left of this. So we just pulled all of our arugula today because it was seeding and we didn't want it to um uh because all of a sudden arugula would go wild. It'll be it'll, it'll take over everything. Hmm. So, uh, my onions, I love onions, I love leeks, scallops, scallions, and red onions. So I leave this all year, and what that is, is I can come in and say, okay, I need a couple, I need a couple green onions for uh, dinner tonight. We're making tacos, right? We need some onions. Come in here, loosen up a little bit. You don't have to pull the whole thing, you can pull what 
she needs. So that's what I do. I pull what I need. Um, these are really good out of here, just some kind of vinaigrette and on the grill. Uh, they're so sweet. They're nothing like the onions that you get in the stores, obviously. Um, but if you come closer, you'll start seeing this right here. Oh, yeah. Right? I don't have many, right? So when that flower comes out, we can use those, those the seeds that are going to be in there to grow for the next year. And these are leeks. They're huge. Um, but these are like, and you can eat every part of this if you'd like. Um, but I like to keep this here all year long. So you can enjoy it all year long. So next is strawberries. I've, growing up, I've always, I love strawberries. They're one of my favorite fruits. And I've always wanted a strawberry patch. So we planted this last year and we didn't get a lot. Um, I think I shocked them when we planted them basically. We planted a little bit late because we actually built this garden last year. All the raised beds, uh, the drip system, me and my husband dug and uh, layered and cemented. And she has pictures. Up. I'll put some pictures at the end. So stay tuned, look for the pictures. Uh, so strawberries, here they are. And you see the flowers are all coming up and next year we're gonna put the lettuces in between. They'll feed off each other. They'll get bigger, they'll yield more, um, but they're already producing flowers. Uh, we gotta get in here, that's what we're doing today. It's cleaning up, but it's just, that's it, right? There you go, pull all those dead stuff out. Super easy um, and super awesome. So they look good. You know, but some, are gonna, some leaves are gonna die, that's normal, you know? but the color and everything that is uh, still left here because of the zone we're in. If you're not in the zone uh, and come winter time, all the leaves will turn this purple, this like red color. You gotta wait for all of them to turn red, then you cover them with burlap and then you can take the burlap off and next summer you'll have your, your strawberries getting the bigger, you know, they're rooted, they get more, they produce more. So this year we should get a lot. Mm. They should have a nice amount of strawberries on them. But because of the zone, I don't have to cover them because all the leaves don't die. And so this, this will be like end of summer, early fall kind of harvest. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is with strawberries is they all harvest at a different time. So you don't got like 50 strawberries at once. If you know, unless you wanted to, you can make that happen. I'm sure, but you can eat and pluck and eat and pluck all summer and um, have a lot. So they're already starting. We got the flowers awesome. is what turns into the strawberry. So you see the flower, that's where a strawberry is going to be. And if you come closer and you look, you'll actually see all the flowers have already turned into little strawberries. Oh, yeah. See them? Strawberry. So. Always pull the dead stuff off of your plant because if you don't, the plant is still working on that part of it and it takes away from the other part of the plant that you want it to work on. You want it to feed, not the dead part, pull it out, you want it to feed this part. I didn't know this, but fennel is actually what's used to make um, the licorice flavor in candy. And so basically just give this a nice little squeeze. And that smells amazing. I mean, I wish you could scratch and sniff the screen right now because I mean, I could just sit here and just smell this all day long. Um, it's almost like, it's like effervescent. It's like waking me up by smelling it. You could take that, clip it off, put it in some hot water in the morning for tea. That's awesome. It's amazing. And for some reason, bees love fennel. So when it starts to get a little bigger, it'll start to have little flowers on it. I leave it. As you can see, I have ladybugs in my garden. See that right there? They're going to eat all the bugs. I have them everywhere. So I'm happy. I didn't have to bring them in. They're already here. So I lucked out. Um, but yeah, they eat all the bad stuff, right? Um, so this plant, it, it, summer plant, dies in the winter, it came back, right? So it used to be like this. So about how big this ended up being. The bees attacked it all over, all year, which brought bees to my garden to help pollinate everything. You wanna plant things that bees love. Um, they love this. They love the smell of the flower on this. So, you know, we take it a step further. Um, when this died, I clipped it off and uh, it smells so good. It still smells like the plant. Uh, we actually love to cook. We love to smoke meats. And so what we do is we use, the, we soak these in water and we use it to smoke meat. So um, I like to, to use whatever I can and use everything I can. So if you look over here, you'll see two piles of dip. That is apricot and our peach tree. And you'll yield that much of trimmings off your tree every year. I use those for smoking meats also. So we chop them up, soak them in water, and we use them uh, to, to smoke meat. So all of our trees that we trim, we use all of it to tell, smoke. Tell us more about the trees that you have back here. Okay, so right here is apricot. We have two uh, peach trees here. One right over here next to the shed is a nectarine. Um, and I'm 
gonna show you what I actually yielded last year because I do have some left in vacuum seals and they hold really well if you vacuum seal stuff. So next ring in the very back there is cherry. Um, right here I have fig. We're gonna show you these two to how to plant these. It takes five minutes to plant these trees. Literally, I'm telling you five minutes. And then that's my gala apple tree that is actually uh, producing and we'll get apples and they're gonna be delicious. I do also have pomegranate, lemon, lime, uh, clementine. Uh, we have goji berries, blackberries, blueberries, uh, boysenberries, and raspberries. Um, definitely wanna feed my kids the best uh, of everything, obviously. and. Um, this will really help us do that. So, so tell, tell, tell me more about um, in, in involving the kids in this process. How, how have you seen that you know, affect them both in their understanding of agriculture and their excitement to actually consume the food? So they start from the beginning to end with me. So yesterday we went to the nursery to pick some stuff out. And I take them to the They know us there. Harley comes. The dog comes to the nursery with us. Um, I say, okay, I need, I need a couple strawberry plants or I need a sage plant. I let them pick it out. So they pick it out and they put it in the basket. Now we bring it home. I don't plant it. I don't plant them, they plant them. I just stand there and I, you know, sometimes I go around and at, right behind them, but they dig the hole, they put it in, they cover it up. So they get satisfaction and they get so excited when things start producing and they come out here, my kids will eat everything that's in this garden. I don't have to force them. They will, they will just eat it because they're excited about it. Because, okay kids, let's have a salad tonight. Go in the garden, pick some herbs, pick some lettuce, pick some carrots. There's my, my son right now. What do you do? I'll After school snack, celery. he's picking celery and carrots and he's eating it. I've already had some, thank you son. Thank you. Look at, look, show him. Show him your carrot that, you, that you're eating. So that's what come my on, kids people. come home from what, school. What, what kids do you know did pick fresh food and just eat it off, eat it straight out of the garden like that? He comes from he came from school. He he wanted a snack. <laughs> then why don't you go grab something from the garden? Love it. All right, so I love fresh herbs. Um, I love cooking with fresh herbs. Basil is my favorite. I fail every year on basil. I am determined this year not to fail on basil. Um, it's one of those things that's temperamental. It has to have a really good root base. But once it does have a good root base, it's like by abundance. It'll just come out in abundance. Um, I want to make pestos and you know tomato caprices with my tomatoes and basil. Um, so it's delicious, but we just planted all these last night. Uh, chamomile, you know, I like to plant things also that, you know, you can use for your body if you need to heal or if you're tired or if you're not, not feeling good, you know, chamomile tea, so I'm making chamomile. This is citronella. Uh, I love the smell of fresh citronella. You can take that, uh, heat up some coconut oil, put it in there so it infuses in there and use that wow. as a natural um, bug repellent. So. Um, not just food, I like to expand and do other things like medicine wise, so um, that's really good. Uh, oregano, peppermint, tarragon, parsley, chives, garlic chives, cilantro, lemon thyme, sage, and I do have some huge plants out front, also herbs um, that are good to keep bugs away from your, uh, your plants. So my, herb, my little herb garden uh, for summertime, a lot of these will die off and come back next year. Um, so. Uh, the perennial, they'll keep coming back. So like asparagus is perennial, I'll, I'll leave it. We leave it in the winter, it's gonna come back next summer. So this is Conley Acres. Well, obviously Natasha has a pretty amazing farm and um, I, I, I'm hesitant to call it a garden. It's beyond a garden, a little mini farm. So you might be thinking, no way, no way can they eat all that. No way, you know, can they consume all that food. And you're right, um, you can't just consume all that food unless you're giving a lot away which is exactly what Natasha does. She gives a ton of food away, people that help her harvest, she gives a ton of food away. But one of the things that she does, she vacuum seals and freezes. So um, this, this is carrot greens, but she can use to make a pesto, uh, chop up to throw into a salad, juice this as well. And then they've got a deep freeze. So this is from last year's harvest, is what I have left. So um, when you start looking at things, it doesn't have all the freezer burn, right? I can pull this out and make a pie and you wouldn't tell that they had been frozen. These are pears from my pear tree, okay? There's so many different levels of which you can do this too. Um, these are peaches that have been, I can remove the skin so you can make barbecue sauces, jellies, fruit roll-ups. I make my kids fruit roll-ups. Um, they don't have to eat. Crappy fruit that you get from the store, apricots. This is apples. 
And this is what was left over. This and I have was... the amount that I have. I, I don't even know. I have so much more. This whole refrigerator is completely full. I mean, bags. I can't even reach the amount of consumption off of what I get. Nectarines. Nectarines. And there's like 10 more bags in here. And what else can we do? What else can we do, right? Kids love ice cream, right? Okay. Apricot puree. I pureed the, pureed the apricots and put nothing else in it. You take this out, here's your ice cream, kids. Apricot puree. And you could do that with any of these items. Um, I love apricot barbecue sauce. It's good. Now, um, fruit roll-ups, fruit snacks. Kids love that crap, right? They love it and it's crap. It's filled with all this stuff, right? What we do is you take any of these fruits, you blend it in a blender. You don't have to add anything to it. All the natural sugars are already in there. They're already sweet. You take it, you put a thin layer on sheet pans, and you cook it like at 200 degrees for like six hours, and you got fruit roll-ups. So that's how we make fruit rolls. Any of this stuff here could be ice cream, a barbecue sauce, a jelly or a jam. There's more ways than just eating it, you know. Uh, I dehydrate a lot of it. So I don't know if I have any more dehydrated fruit because my kids devour it. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> so, but de dehydration, vacuum sealing holds the integrity of the fruit. These are apples. And these were the best apples I've ever had in my life. And I didn't realize it because I've never gone to an apple tree and picked one off that wasn't, you know, made for mass consumption where you have pesticides and all this stuff on it. And, I, you know, I was hearing the adults in my life, with them, my grandmas and grandpas, like, peaches don't taste like they used to. Because nowadays we're mass producing food. So to mass produce food on a level in which we all need it, they have to stuff it with hormones and all this stuff. That's not good for you. Not good for your kids. Um, so, this apples, you make an apple bread, flour, sugar, a little cinnamon, fresh apples. It's not a bunch of crap, basically. I don't know how else you could put it. Um, and preservatives and stuff. So it makes the best desserts. You know, apple and fruit tarts, you know. I still feel like, okay, I'll make you a dessert, kids. But you're making a little homemade dough and you're just throwing a bunch of fresh fruit in it. And, and it's delicious. So I highly, highly recommend um, if you're going to do any kind of, it doesn't matter if it's vegetables, fruits, greens, Vacuum seal. Um, vacuum seal your food and it will preserve it and it's amazing. So um, when I pull this off to make pesto, as you can see the color of it, still, there's still yeah. that green color as if we did just picked them because we're removing all the air in there which helps stop the oxidization process in your vegetables and your fruit. Have you ever cut an apple open, right? When you cut that apple open, right, within how many seconds do you see it turn brown, right? So. I don't even have to do that, but what I do also do is I take a lemon from the lemon tree, put water, lemon, drop your fruit in there, then vacuum seal it, it holds it for even longer. So you're looking at a vacuum seal, a bag of apples will last 18 months. Yeah. So all this fruit is good for 18 months. And for um, dehydrating your, your fruits, is looking at two years. Wow. So it's a long time to uh, eat healthy, fresh and organic.